Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of F1 2021 career mode here on the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we have the final Azerbaijan Baku City Circuit GP here on the channel today for this F1 2021 career mode before the F1 22 career mode here and which is now crazy to think just below a month away here. As you can see the point standings coming into today's episode right now coming off of a pretty epic drive in the Monaco GP to get a top 10 there and that was our second back to back as well ninth place finish uh, here in this season. Only 10 races as we mentioned many times. So after today, we're nearly halfway through the season at the conclusion of this Azerbaijan GP and we are continuing or continuing to make as many upgrades as possible to this BWT Mercedes so that way we can have a competitive car for say the last half of the season and if the possibility is there be able to make a push and we, I can confirm have quite a few more upgrades on the way so far. We're doing a really good job right now picking up some R&D points throughout the weekend and being able to uh, really get this car upgraded but I mean Red Bull is so far ahead that it's going to be pretty much impossible to catch them but I think we could honestly if we play our cards right get to the second best car on the grid and hopefully be competing for race victories here uh, throughout this season by the time we get to the end of the season at least here now as we come through into practice and whatnot and we were okay in practice here once again uh, every track pretty much this season I'm learning uh, without the breaking line for the first time so it's been a bit of an adapting process here uh, but we were getting the hang of as Azerbaijan pretty quick. It's not a very tricky track here, but it's really important to get the braking zones correct here because obviously the really long straightaways really means you have to have a really technical braking zone or a, a precise braking zone, I should say. Now, as we come through into qualifying and qualifying has been my weakness so far uh, with this new Mercedes team. I haven't made Q3 yet this season. Obviously, when you look at the R&D chart, we look like a car that's going to be actually right on the, the borderline of making Q3. So it's not like we're way far off, but compared to my my teammate of Audrey Bontas, he's out-qualified us every GP so far, uh, but what's most interesting is we've actually beat him in every GP so far in the actual race, so, um, but coming into Q1 here now, just looking for a decent lap, and that's what I got, I got P10 here on my first attempt, there. made a mistake in turn one, but fortunately we had good enough of a lap to move ourselves into Q2, you can see we would end up P13, but look at that, six tenths pretty much between myself and Bontas there, so some work to do going into now Q2, some uh, clouds that came over the track here, some overcast conditions conditions at this point. Temperatures cool down just a little bit here now as I was looking uh, to put in a just absolute beast of a lap here now and I thought I put in a decent lap, uh, one that was going to be competitive but I actually ended up being kind of wrong about how this lap was competitive and you're going to see that here uh, as I, I felt like overall through the lap I got through here pretty good like I said but it just wasn't going to be enough we come through down this run straight away and we only go P15 yeah we're two tenths out of the top 10 I made a second lap but it was slower by nearly two tenths of a second it wouldn't be enough and we would continue the streak of elimination in Q2 and look at that I mean we even got beat up by guys on the medium compound tire I don't know what it is about me and qualifying so far this season but we just don't have the pace that that we need and all we needed was a few more tents but anyways let's head to the grid a warm welcome to all of you watching at home to today's azerbaijan grand prix and a race that in its short history has already proven no stranger to drama a fourth row start is just about as likely to give you a podium as a pole position would and remember in 2017 and 2018 both lance stroll and then sergio perez took surprise podiums here with 20 turns and a length of 3.7 miles Baku City Circuit in the heart of the Azerbaijan capital is a real test of a driver's endurance, patience and precision. 90 degree corners through sector one lead into a tightening uphill sprint as we start to circle around the old city. Then a 1.4 mile chase flat out through sector three towards the finish line. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me out, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness, and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position, edging out Lando Norris, who'll start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Sonoda, 
Lance Stroll and Giovinazzi, Bottas, Leclerc, Lundgaard and George Russell. Vettel, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Matsushita, Carlos Sainz, the Golden Boy, Mick Schumacher, Ricardo, Nicholas Latifi and Esteban Ocon, Joe and Callum Eilert. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. We're ready to go lights out here in Azerbaijan. I wasn't too concerned about my qualifying effort. There you see the strategy starting on the softs, going to two sets of mediums throughout this GP. Always the potential for a safety car here. There's a couple of, of course, you could kind of call it dank corners that can really cause some issues uh, for not only myself, but the AI as well here. You see Daniel Ricardo actually got a grid penalty. He starts back here with us in P16. And once again, as usual, as expected, it's Red Bull making up the first few spots here with Verstappen and Lando Norris. It's going to be five red lights and it's going to be lights so we are underway here in the final Baku City Circuit GP in this F1 2021 career mode. It's Verstappen Norris. One, two, you got the Alpha Tories just behind it in the background. You can already see some scrapping it out. Actually, they're going four wide, obviously not side by side, but four lanes difference there, I guess I should say, between the cars here now as they head down this first long straightaway here on the circuit now as everyone's going to be trying to stay tucked in behind each other, get that slipstream by myself. My kind of motto for here was just keep the car in one piece and get through this first lap and see what happens after that. So I was looking to not even get aggressive at this point here. I tried to gain a few spots, of course, uh, when I had the opportunity, but like I said, I wasn't trying to push the issue too much. I feel like uh, we benefited by not pushing the issue too much so far this season, but obviously Monaco was the first race where we were really getting aggressive, and it obviously worked there uh, at Monaco. Fortunately, we never slammed into the barrier and damaged the wing or anything here now. As you can see, everyone just uh, settling down here into the corner. You can see Ricardo in the McLaren Vodafone off the pace. He actually picked up wing damage on this opening lap, so Ricardo was going to have to come into the pits at the conclusion of this first lap already. Lots of uh, elbows out, physical racing on this opening lap and would result in a couple of more drivers picking up some wing damage and you're going to see a couple cars at the conclusion of this first lap, uh, not just Ricardo, pitting to replace their front wings here now and you can see a big space between that BMW right there and then the next BMW here as they're going to scrap it out wheel to wheel. That's Yuki Sonoda right there trying to pass, I believe that's Lance Schroll uh, in that BMW machine and they're going to continue side by side here into a corner where you don't really want to be side by side doing some of they make it work but look at the stack up here that Sonoda has caused I mean it's great for me because Bottas is right behind him and I'm right at the back of this battle as well and here I go to the uh, left hand side of Carlos Sainz and we're going to be wheel to wheel and you can see the couple cars coming into the pit lane Sonoda and Stroll actually both of those drivers and they're three wide in front of us as we head down into turn one three by three two rows of three wide there briefly into turn one spectacular stuff here as we're looking uh, to the outside of Matsushita here now into turn two and we're just going to try and round the outside and all running we moved into the top 10 here in the uh, running order now as we're all over the back of the Madagascan of uh, Charles Leclerc. We're going to look to the right hand side of him and pull that slipstream from George Russell here in the Alpine and we're going to dive down into turn three. Uh, nearly a close moment right there with Leclerc but we get ahead and move up into P9 and now we would have to wait until the front straightaway to have another chance to be able to do anything on George Russell but that opportunity would present itself well and we would take advantage of it and here we are wheel to wheel passing George Russell. We're going to move up at eighth place here at the start of lap three as DRS is enabled here and then our next of course objective is going to be Christian Lungard uh, in that Williams portion now with the DRS assistance no DRS for him we're going to breeze on pass and move up into P7 the first car behind our teammate of Bottas what a first and opening four laps again we've had some really good starts here this season so far that's kind of been able to make up for the errors I've made in qualifying or the slow pace I've had in qualifying now we were on the soft compound tire compared to Bottas's medium compound tire so the soft compound dies off pretty quick here in Baku and on lap five they were already falling off and actually at the conclusion of lap six into the pit lane I go for my first of two pit stops in this GP and we're going to throw on that medium compound tire uh, so one of two medium compound tire pit stops here. Now, I always love the two-stop races. I always look forward to a race when there's two stops because it just opens the door for actual strategy. When it's a one-stop race, there's really not a whole lot of strategy that goes into it, you know? Uh, so when it's a two-stop race, it opens the door to get a little bit creative. Now, obviously, uh, in Baku, I wasn't really looking at a creative strategy here, but here we come through to the conclusion of lap nine. Schumacher into the pits, and Bontas as well is just coming out of the pits. Actually, Schumacher was still on track. He was pitting, I think, another lap later, but Bontas is going to exit the pit lane 
and just in front of us here, we're on the medium compound, he's on the soft compound, so that meant that, well, he was probably going to be able to just drive away from me at this point, I was hoping we could be ahead of him, wasn't the case, and, well, sure enough, the case would be, Bontas would actually pull away here quite significantly over the next few laps, lap 13, now 2.7 seconds between myself and Bontas here, now just trying to manage my pace here on this run here as we come through uh, to look at a little quick race uh, update here in lap 14 of 26, Max Verstappen leading the way over his teammate right there of Lando Norris. These two have been the class of the field all season so far. Gasly rounding off the podium. Sebastian Vettel right now running in fourth place. Ricardo, by the way, P8 there after picking up that wing damage here. So we'll see, though. He's a little bit off strategy. We'll have to see what he can do if he can rebound. He'll probably need a safety car if he really wants to be able to rebound here uh, from that uh, error that he made on lap one as we come through. Now closing in on lap 15. And there it is right there. The safety car is going to come out. And immediately you see me pull to the left side of the track. Get into the pit lane. Perfect timing for us. Into the pits we go. I would put on another set of medium compound tires. So make my final pit stop under safety car. Here's what happens. Sonoda blows an engine. And then big contact with the Alpine right there. Debris goes flying. Sonoda out of the race. And the safety car flies simply because of the amount of debris on the circuit. So after everything cycled out. I was in 7th place. Everyone in front of us pitted except for Bontas and Norris. So we're going to gain 2 spots no matter what because Bontas and Norris still have to pit. But we get to the restart here and have to wait to pass Giovinazzi. But I know I have an advantage over Bontas. Fresh rubber. I lunge up the inside of my teammate of Bontas. We run him a little bit wide there. Felt bad about that one here. And Giovinazzi is going to put the attack to him now as well. Uh, but Bontas is going to have to pit within literally another lap or two. So I was baffled as to why he didn't pit either. Uh, but that moves myself up into 5th place. Bontas sure enough on lap 20 comes into the pits, but all of a sudden things have uh, changed quite drastically here in this GP. It's still Verstappen out in front. Ricardo now behind us there in P7. Vettel up there in third place. Safety car comes out again at the conclusion of lap 20. Another curveball thrown at us here, and it was the same corner that struck as the last time uh, that brought out the safety car. This time it's Mick Schumacher side by side uh, with the Williams Porsche, and look at that once again. Major contact. Wing, uh, just the wing flying flies off, it's flying everywhere, debris all over the place, safety car is out, and we would get going for another restart here on the conclusion of lap 22, coming to lap 23, and there it is again, a lunge up the inside of Pierre Gasly here, up into third place, into the podium positions, but I just, as you could expect, uh, with the R&D situation, we don't have the speed for the McLaren right now, we don't have the speed for the Red Bull, so I was just hoping that we could hold on, and I don't as well have the speed for the Alpha Tori here, as Gasly coming to two laps to go is going to try and go past me, but here comes the Australian of Daniel Ricciardo as well here side by side down this front straightaway towards turns one where is Daniel Ricciardo gonna go he's gonna go to the right side of the track I stay up the inside here of Gasly on the exit of turn one wheel to wheel right there but we're actually gonna tuck in behind him Bontas would come into the pit lane again he actually picked up wing damage on the restart so he would have a miserable ending to this GP in the back and you can see I couldn't use the DRS to pass Gasly unfortunately with two laps to go and we cut straight through onto this final lap a lap later here and what a GP this turned into out of nowhere in the final half uh, as Max Verstappen is still going to hold off uh, against everything that was thrown at him here for a victory in the Azerbaijan GP and unfortunately uh, unless something crazy happens here to Pierre Gasly or Sebastian Vettel or Verstappen we're not going to quite get our first podium of the season and actually we might be in for a little bit of a scrap here with Daniel Ricciardo because we exit the final legitimate corner and Ricciardo is close. Norris who had to pit off cycle is still in P6 on the soft compound tire only 6 tenths back here as we head down this front straightaway for the final time and Ricardo's going to open that rear wing. There's the DRS here as I try to break that slipstream but it's not going to quite be enough. He continues to follow me and look at the run he has for Stappen wins. It's going to be a drag race with Ricardo. It's going to be a photo finish and we hold on at the line to get P4 here in the Azerbaijan GP just barely by mere centimeters over Ricardo right there and we get our best result of the season with this BWT Mercedes team with fourth place. I will take that Ricardo driver of the day. We are then, it's victory in Azerbaijan. Great work from the whole team here at the track and back at the factory as well. And some pretty handy driving for good measure. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralized. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them.
They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. What a GP, definitely the craziest GP of the season and one of the crazier ones in uh, in recent uh, memory of this career mode at least. And, uh, you know, unfortunately we didn't quite get the podium, but we still had a big day in the points and now up to eighth in the standings. Bontas only has two points. It's been a rough start to the season for Bontas, who's been so good in qualifying, leading this team in qualifying, but then we've been actually the one leading the team in the actual GPs. It's been interesting how it's going uh, back and forth there. Bontas shows up in qualifying. I don't. I show up in the race. Bontas has some form of issue every time we go into these GPs here. As you can see, immediately diving into some more R&D here, getting as many upgrades like I said as we can because we want to be able to compete here and still have a respectable finish on this final season. And look at this. It now moves us up to third on the R&D and going into my home GP in the next episode in Canada and Montreal. Hopefully, we'll have a strong run there and maybe get this car where we would like it to be and hopefully go for a podium. But obviously, uh, who knows what's going to happen. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for taking the time to do for watching. I appreciate it so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one from my home race in the Canadian GP. Thank you for watching once again, and have yourselves a great day.